Hey guys, Brother David, so good to be with you this week and look forward to this time together and, and praying about and thinking about what I might share with you. Uh, I remembered uh, something that I had read some time ago about the lessons we can learn from a pencil. Just a simple number two pencil. The word pencil comes from an old French word that means a small paintbrush. It's been said that the average pencil can draw a line 35 miles long. That's amazing. But the story that I read talked about how that a pencil maker took a pencil aside one day before he put it in the box. And he said, there are five things that I want to share with you before I put you in the box. If you always remember these things, you'll become the best pencil that you can be. First of all, this he said, you'll be able to do many great things, but only if you allow yourself to be held in someone's hands. You, know, you think about that. The simple things or the things that uh, everyday things like a basketball, a basketball in my hands, probably worth about 10, 15 bucks. A basketball in LeBron James hands worth millions of dollars. A golf club in my hands, pretty much worthless. But a golf club in Tiger Woods hands, millions of dollars. It's worth millions of dollars. And so, you know, if your if your life is in the right hands, if we allow ourselves to be placed in in God's hands, think about that. In the hands of the right person, a pencil can make beautiful drawings. Uh, in the hands of the right person, a pencil can uh, write amazing stories or can solve complex uh, mathematical problems. Or a pencil can do a, a, make a perfect blueprint in the hands of an architect. Uh, but a pencil can also write one of the most touching love stories. All those things if the pencil is held in the right hands. Just like that pencil, you have the ability and the capacity to do some awesome things if your life is placed in the right hands. And you know, in the hand of God, your possibilities are endless. So your story is yet untold and, and your life's being written uh, day by day. So allow yourself, my prayer is that you allow yourself to be, Lord, I want you to take my life and use it for your honor and your glory. You know, Jeremiah 29, 11 says, I know the plans that I think towards you, that I have towards you, God says. Thoughts of peace and not evil to give you a future and a hope. Secondly, you know, the uh, pencil maker said, now, a pencil, you, you've got to be sharpened to be of the greatest use. You know, if you've ever used a pencil, very often it'll, it'll break and you'll have to have a pencil sharpener to sharpen it back. But once it's sharpened back, it begins to, uh, it begins to work just like it did before. How are we sharpened? How are our lives sharpened? Well, in a number of ways. Uh, you know, uh, one good way to be sharpened is through your education as you study. Uh, and, and think about your schoolwork as this. Don't look upon it as something that you have to do, but something that you get to do because it's going to, you're going to learn from that. And uh, one of the things, one of the ways to, to make it better is to look like you uh, or uh, look at it like you're doing it for Jesus. No matter what you're doing, if you're doing schoolwork, if you're doing chores around the house, look at it like you're doing it for Jesus. You know, the uh, the Bible says this in Colossians 3, 17. What, whatever you do in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father by Him. You know, uh, other things can sharpen you. God's Word can sharpen you. Uh, friends can sharpen you. Uh uh, you know, even even sometimes our, our mistakes and, and, and troubles that we have, they can sharpen us. Why? Because they teach us. Uh, they teach us through those things. doesn't mean that everything that happens to us is good. But the Bible says in Romans 8.28, we know that all things, uh, that in all things God works for good to those who love him and have been called according to his purpose. The next thing the pencil maker said now in the proper position pencil, you can, your mistakes can be corrected. Have you ever thought about that? When the pencil is sitting upright, when it's upright and writing, okay, it can do a lot of things. But that pencil at its best, we're going to make some mistakes. But how are those mistakes corrected? Well, that pencil is bowed down. And then the other end comes into play, the eraser. And you begin, to, you can correct your mistakes. This is why the Lord needs to have top priority in your life. Because you see, there are going to be times when we say things we shouldn't say. We do things we shouldn't do. Therefore, we need to go to the Lord quickly. Ask Him to forgive us. Ask Him to forgive us. Bow before Him. Say, Lord Jesus, forgive me. I didn't want to. I didn't. I want to do that. I don't want to do that anymore. And our mistakes can be corrected. 
The Bible says it this way. If we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us of all unrighteousness. Another thing the pencil maker said, pencil don't ever forget. It's what's inside you that counts. Have you ever noticed something? Pencils come in all shapes and sizes and colors. You know, uh, just like people. They're all different. But on the inside, that pencil, the lead that's inside it, it's the same. It's the same in all the pencils that are uh, uh, that are like it. Inside of us, we have a heart and a soul, and it's what's inside of us that counts. You know, uh, have you thought about that? It's it's your heart that counts. So often you see people, and what they care about is your appearance, or or, or you know or where you come from, or the clothes you wear. It's not about those things. It's about what's inside you, what's in your heart. The Bible says man looks at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks on the heart. You see, the Lord Jesus knows what's inside you. And he has a, as I said, he has a great plan for you. Now, but finally, the pencil maker said, always remember pencil, leave your mark wherever you go. How do we do that? Well, the pencil leaves its mark by writing on the paper. And then after the pencil is written on the paper, then you, then you will see the results of that. I hope you can see that. What do we need to do? We need to allow the Lord to use us daily for his honor and his glory that we might leave a mark wherever we go, a mark for good, a mark for our faith, a mark for Jesus. Leave no doubt he is first place in our lives. And you leave your mark by being you and you'll make your mark by standing up for the Lord. And you'll make your mark by declaring, this is what I believe. I believe that Jesus Christ is my Lord and my Savior. My prayer for each and every one of you is that you will choose that very thing. And that you can be all that you can be in Jesus. He sure loves you. And I do too. Let's pray. Father, thank you for your word. Thank you for your goodness. And thank you, Lord, for all the things we can learn, even from a simple pencil. In Jesus' name. Amen. See you next time.